Hickok 45, and I have learned that Schofields and hogs are a good mix. That's five. That should be it. Oh, I see four hits. Must have put a couple on top of one another. Yeah, the Schofield. Pretty interesting, huh? Just jack those rounds out and uh, load them up and shoot again. That's how it works. And speaking of that, this is an again video, as you saw. I like this thing. I, I don't think I put it on the same level as a Colt single action. Uh, well, I know I don't, but uh, in terms of history and, and cool factor, it's right up there, isn't it? It's, it just really is. <laughs> and I haven't shot it for a long time. And uh, I'm gonna shoot that some more. Let's invite our valued viewers. Uh, ooh, valued viewers, a little alliteration there. Uh, over here on the Gong Club range and let's just shoot at some. So that's what we're gonna do, a little again video. It's kind of a nice fall afternoon, a little warmish, but uh, so you shouldn't have that sweater on, Bill. But it's uh, yeah, a pretty nice day. So let's take it back to the shooting table. And we talked about the Schofield, the number three Smith & Wesson. Well, actually they called it the Model 3, which is what the Schofield is. It's a variation of the Model 3, which is very successful a uh, revolver for Smith & Wesson. You know, it was the early cartridge revolver. You know, it beat the Colt single action, in fact, because they were able to uh, chamber one for, you know, uh, metallic cartridges before Colt was. They had the patents on that and everything. And uh, it's just, they're just cool. This is the Schofield, which was just a variation of the uh, Model Model 3. There were the, the latch changed on it. Uh, there are a few little uh, improvements other than that, I think. the the extractor maybe some some aspect to the extractor and uh but the big deal was the latch uh general or no it was major or colonel and maybe he was both at various times but uh major schofield colonel schofield came up with the idea uh, for cavalry that it would be great to have and i know i'm repeating this for, but some of you this may be the only video you've ever seen it might be the only video you ever see about the schofield but uh, he came up with the idea of taking the latch off the uh the barrel it was up here and and putting it on the frame because when it was up here you sort of it was a kind of a two-handed operation and i have used those you know you'd lift you'd need to kind of grab it you know like i've got it there and then pull up on this and then break it down so it was a kind of a two-handed operation well, this made it a one-hand operation you kind of bring the cock the first notch and then just pull that back and it opens it up and why would that be handy why would a one-handed operation be handy? Same reason it is for me today. My hand's not totally healed. And so this is a perfect uh, firearm to be shooting with one hand. It, it made it better if you're on horseback, right? Cavalry. Because, uh, I mean, think about reloading uh, on horseback any kind of handgun. Uh, think about a percussion revolver reloading one of those on horseback. I, I don't know if that's even doable, hardly. You go over and sit somewhere on your horse, maybe under a tree. Uh, while well, the battle's going on over there, maybe, and do it. I don't know. But uh, even with a cold single action, you think about it. You're on a horse, and, you know, he's moving around, and you got the reins you're hanging on to. Okay, I'm empty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I got half cock, and I, I got to unload it, and I've got to, you know, punch those rounds out, you know, and turn the cylinder and punch another one out. Now, that would be a bit of a challenge, wouldn't it, on a horseback? Okay. Uh, so... That is the advantage of the Schofield, the number three even, you know, uh, for cavalry. And, uh, and it was actually adopted and used and the military bought a bunch of them. Uh, number threes, they're the Model 3s and, and the Schofields, not nearly in the numbers of the Colt. And we talked about some of that history just quickly. So it was kind of a short period of time that the Schofield was used. But they did, I think they sold around 8,000 of them maybe to the military. And uh, so they were out there. But the ammo was part of the problem. This, these are actually Schofield rounds right here. They're a little shorter than the uh, Colt, uh, oh, 45 Colt. And I've shown you this before, but you see this is a little shorter. And the Schofield round, when uh, Smith & Wesson came up with the Schofield in 45, you know, they'd been available in 44, the Model 3 had. 44 Russian, 44 American, I think, and all that. But and even 44 Henry, I think. But the... Uh, but when they made a 45, they they chambered it in a shorter cartridge. They just couldn't stand to to make a, a Smith and Wesson revolver that was going to need 
Colt ammunition, the Colt, the 45 Colt, you know, that, so they kind of wanted their own cartridge and it made us shorter. And they did increase the rim size on it, as I understand, because of the star extractor, you know, it needed to catch on that, right? And, uh, and that the, the original Colt, 45 Colts, had really small rims, smaller than the ones today. Uh, but they've, uh, well, smaller, yeah, than the ones today. They increased the size of them a little bit along the way. But and that's another reason they weren't really conducive for a lever action gun as much, like 45 Colt. And so they increased the size of the rim a little bit. Uh, and that was the 45 Schofield. So it ended up being, you know, it's like a 40, it's like a 45 Colt special or something, you know, just a little shorter. But uh, shipping ammo to the outposts and the various, uh, you know, outposts around the country, once a lot of pretty many soldiers had these, well, you know, they might get a shipment of ammo, which they sorely needed, but it would all be regular Colt, Long Colt. That's sort of how it got the name Long Colt, you know, which is really just 45 Colt, but it's longer. And so they'd get these and, and then they wouldn't work. Well, they will in this one because this is chambered in 45 Long Colt, okay? But the originals were just in the Schofield, the shorter one. And so you put a long one in there and it'd be like putting a 44 Magnum in a 44 Special. It would just stick out about like that and fire them wouldn't work, wouldn't close up, wouldn't work. So it was like having no ammo. So then the military eventually, I think they went to just the Schofield round. And uh, when they just shipped everybody Schofield ammo, because it would work in the Colt or, or the Schofield, you know, just like a 44 Special will work in a 44 Special chamber or a 44 Magnum, just a little shorter. All right, so that's kind of the quick and dirty on that, a reminder of that. And that's probably why the Schofield and the, the number or the Model 3 wasn't more successful for a longer period of time than it was because that ammo issue, you know. Uh, but because other than that, it was, a, it was a fine gun, a little more uh, finicky, a little more complex and maybe more likely to have breakage, you know, than the Colt. Colt was kind of simple. You might break a trigger spring or something or even a handspring, but pretty easy to fix in the field. And uh, I think another reason is just the feel. Uh, I love these guns, but they're just a little odd feeling. I, I, I still can't get used to it. it it's, it's neat, <laughs> but the grip is so different from the, uh, the Colt plow handle grip. This just feels like a million bucks as compared with this. You know, this is more like the Remington or something. The whole grip is, seems like it's a little extra long or something, but, but not bad, not horrible. So uh, let's take a couple more shots with it. And again, you just break it open, you put the rounds in. Now I'll load five uh, since we're not in battle. And one thing about the Schofield is always just odd to me is the way they, they don't really yeah, click in the, the turn of the cylinder and everything. That's why, yeah, that now it's on an empty chamber. Okay, let's shoot a pumpkin or let's shoot something like that can there. <laughs> Put a hole in that pumpkin. Put another one in. I see a two liter down there too. Woo! <laughs> Went way up, didn't he? A cowboy down there. Good shooter. Yeah, they're great. And if I were a cavalry back in the 1870s, I probably would have wanted one of these. I really would, as much as I like a Colt. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a little something here. Uh, it'll probably be really stupid, but that's okay. That matches me. Then let's put a few of these in my pocket. Ah, I can say my hand is about healed, but uh, I'm just not supposed to lift anything or do anything much with it, so I, I can steady the gun and that sort of thing. So why don't we? Uh, put it in the holster and I'll show you one other thing. One reason this is a Colt holster here. Another problem you had with it, and, and I understand this was a bit of a problem in the military because they were just trying to get by on whatever holsters they had. So they get some Schofields and maybe they didn't have holsters. Put them in a, uh, one meant for a Colt, it would have been a military holster, but this latch would catch on the holster sometimes. You push it down in there and it's basically open almost. And they pull out the gun and it would be open and lose all their ammo or something. So that would not be good, would it? It'd catch right there. We see on the Schofield holster, you've got a cutout there, so that can't happen. So if you're gonna buy a Schofield, I'd advise you to get a, get a holster for the Schofield. So, so pretty smart, huh? And that's, that's what that is, a Schofield holster. Uh, okay, so I wanna show you that. I'm gonna go over here on my horse here, and what I'll do is load it, put it in, in my uh, holster 
pretend I'm a cavalry man. How's that? Let's see. Now we're in battle, so I'm gonna go ahead and load. Uh, I better not, because the uh, scope feels kind of a weird action. I think I'll stick with five right now. Now I'm gonna. Now see, there's a round under that chamber. Let me pull it back. Okay, now there's not. There we go. Now there's not. Okay, so when I cock it, it should be all right. All right. It's just a little different action than the Colt. Uh, okay. So I've got some in my pocket. I'm going to be a, a cavalry officer here now on my horse. Okay. So <laughs> again, just to show the advantage. Uh, all right. So I've got my reins in my hand. And uh, this horse, of course, doesn't even move around a lot. So, you know, kind of an advantage. But I've got my, my firearm here. And I'm in battle with whoever. I've got, got to have my reins in my hand. I can't let go of my reins, right? So as I was trying to show at the shooting table, with a cold single action, everything you've got to do with it, it takes about three hands to, uh, to, to load it, reload it, and hold your horse. And meanwhile, maybe people are shooting at you or your horse is going crazy. This would be difficult even under the best circumstances, even with a Schofield, right? Okay. So I'm going to take some shots. I'll kind of do it in slow motion and uh, maybe show how this might have been uh, an advantage over the Colt. So I pull my, my uh, pistol and I shoot that pumpkin. <laughs> that plate. I've got my horse by the reins here. Taking care of business. I run out. Okay, so I know I'm empty. There it is. I jacked the rounds out. And I can keep my hands on the reins here. I can, I'm not sure how they uh, carried their ammo. I don't know if they had a Carhartt shirt like I do with uh, rounds in the pocket. But, and since I'm in battle, I'm actually hearing bullets whiz over my head right now. So I'm going to go ahead and load six. And I'm going to close it up and regain the battle here. Yeah, I'll stay in the fight. And you notice all the while I have control of my horse, I never lost control of my horse really. Uh, and then I, same thing, you jack those out, my leg or something. And if I'm lucky, I won't have that happen. Now, I understand that kind of thing would happen quite often. And uh, there you are, you got one stuck under the star. Then you might be just like, uh, the guys with the cold single actions or, or whatever, you've got to go somewhere and, and get that cleared, you know. So, but by and large, you would have an advantage to having, you know, a Schofield. And this is a bit of a problem, even if you're sitting around the shooting table. Uh, I've had that happen before. And let's see, I figured out a solution for that. What was it? Yeah, you need to kind of get that extractor out a bit and get that out of there. So you might have to go park your horse and, and work on that you know and plus you're shooting black powder to begin with and black powder quite often on these Schofields would would hang it up uh, much sooner than it would on a, uh, a cold single action just because of the tolerances and everything oh that's a yeah I'd be having to find me a shade tree <laughs> well away from the battle and here we go. I didn't have the extra. I was afraid it would close up on me. Okay, so so get that out. So if you were a cavalryman, you would have practiced that well enough, more so than me just sitting on a barrel. But you can see the advantage. You finish shooting like that, you know, break it open, get those rounds out. You can hang on to your, your reins there, load him up, shoot him again. All right? So that's kind of the point of turning the barrel over here and give you an idea why that would have a huge advantage over you know, a cold single action, and definitely over a percussion revolver. <laughs> oh man, I knew that would probably happen to get something caught under the extractor. And I don't know, you know, based on the ammo and the sp specific ammo, uh, you know, the size of the rim. The, this is a Cimarron, makes a pretty good one. They're all made by Uberti. Uh, if the uh, early Smith and Wessons were a little bit better about, you know, catching all the rounds, uh, I don't know, don't know. Uh, by and large, I would much prefer to have a Glock 17 if I was in the cavalry, just put it that way, right? But these are neat revolvers. They're neat uh, implements. Uh, so different 
but yet shooting the same cartridges, basically same time period as the old Colt single actions, but uh, just just so different, you know, so vastly different, and and quite an innovation when you think about it. Really, let's shoot a couple more times. We're not going to bore you for more than an hour here. I just wanted to show you that and get it out again and shoot a little bit. Let's shoot some 45 Colt in it. This will be hotter. The old 45, because again, all the almost all of the uh, reproductions of these, like this one, Uberti, Taylor's and Company, or Uberti makes most of them. Pieta, whoever makes them, they're chambered in uh, I think 45 Colt almost exclusively. I can't think of any that are not because uh, you know it's just more widely available. There may be somebody chambering them in, uh, I don't know, some of the other old cartridges, like, uh, I don't know, 44 American or something. There, there's some, actually a couple of companies that load that. Let's just shoot something. Uh, you know, I've not shot this thing long range in so long. I'll, I'll shoot at the gong at least. I have no idea where to hold. Must have been in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This might be my new carry gun. Oh, let's shoot the target. I haven't shot it yet. Boom. Prince a little high, didn't it? Do I have one more for that uh, two liter? I don't think I do. No. Don't think I do. That's okay. Yeah, that was one thing I've read is after a couple of cylinders of black powder, the cylinder would kind of hang up. You got really close tolerances here uh, up in the front of the cylinder, and you need to kind of clean that out and everything. Still, huge advanced uh, advancement beyond the old percussion uh, revolvers, that sort of thing. No doubt about that. Uh, but uh, pretty neat. I guess just like the percussion revolvers, if I was on horseback and I was really in battle, I would kind of like to have two or three of these loaded. Yeah, uh, be pretty handy. Can I shoot one more time? All right, let's do one more. Here you pull back to the latch again. No Schofield, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of drama about all that and how his brother worked for the Army, the department, the military department, and all this kind of thing, and politics. And I think he got a royalty a piece of every gun that was sold because of his innovations yet he was part of the military so it was, it was kind of an issue with that a uh, bit of a controversy I think and uh, and the gun didn't succeed it, it didn't you know last a long time and, and I don't know what all went through and he finally uh, ended himself with one of these you know probably aware of that but uh, but very interesting the firearm and a big piece of our history That hog with little hotter round. Yeah. Yeah, shake him up a little bit. <laughs> well, it does too, doesn't it? Let's get that plate next to him. Hmm. Pretty nice old revolver, I'll have to say. Let's see if I can get another one under the star extractor there. I'll get that brass. Uh, it might be the 45 Colt does better. I don't know, since it's designed for 40. Colt. I was, I was thinking before the video, one of the things that I don't like about uh, doing the kinds of things I find myself doing here, this barrel, it shouldn't matter, but it's kind of like a break open shotgun, especially if you're skeet, shooting skeet or sporting clays. Uh, you know, you walk around there and there are people are carrying their shotgun like this. I do the same thing. Don't do that very often, but you know, think about a shotgun up on your shoulder and you've got the barrel, it's broken open, walking around with it. And, and it's just one of those things that even though it's like, <laughs> Uh, one of the safest things you can do really with a handgun and like this I don't think it's going to go off you know but it's just weird because you're more likely to point that barrel at yourself or your leg like I was sitting on the barrel I was trying not to but it just doesn't seem right to do it uh, but in my brain I know it's totally safe because uh, it's not <laughs> even if it were loaded there's nothing that uh, could ignite that cartridge you know but uh, it's just one of those things but an interesting gun and uh, I've enjoyed owning it and, and shooting the thing. Thought I'd bring it out again. Thought I'd invite y'all to come along. How's that? And you know what? I don't think I thank the people that help us. And uh, I, I should be whipped because we had so much help from budsgunshop.com. They do so much for us. They uh, you know provide firearms on loan, as you know. And then uh, we send them back for the e-gunner auctions. And we get probably 
I don't know, two, three, four, sometimes a month firearms that we can bring to you and we can learn about and uh, give you our opinions on that we otherwise you know, might not have. You know, just new firearms, just uh, anything. So we appreciate their help. And then, of course, the NRA, the support we get from them. And I hope you'll go to the link in the description and join up if you're not a member because you can get a discount. All right. And as I always say, you start with the NRA. It's what I've always done. Then you go from there because there's a lot of organizations you probably should belong to if you can possibly afford it, especially your local and your state organizations. OK, do whatever you can. I mean, do whatever you can. I mean, you can get into the drama of who does what, just like with other charities and, you know, you know, where one dollar goes or doesn't go or who gets paid this and that and that. But by and large, you need to be doing what you can. OK. And uh, and then also federal. We just fired a bunch of federal ammo. So appreciate them. Now, some of this was not. They, they don't load the Schofield round. OK, this is some outfit out in the, the Black Hills. I don't know who it is, but it's out there in uh, River Rapid City, I think, uh, in the Black Hills in South Dakota. In fact, I was out there and I bought those when I was out there in Rapid City in South Dakota, in the, I was in the Black Hills. It's pretty cool, so I thought I'd shoot some of those for a change. But it is chambered for 45 Colt. You don't need the short ones uh, to make it operate. So anyway, glad you came by. As always, it's a great afternoon out here, and uh, it's a good day to shoot. That's a dumb thing to say. You know why? It's always a good day to shoot. Life is good. I always wanted to do that. Okay, since you guys are here at the end of the video, I want to remind you of our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program where you become certified in gunsmithing uh, or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. It's sdi.edu. And also, a uh, big announcement lately on the channel, our shirts are now with uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch's new company, Bunker Branding. So you can find shirts like this and many others over at uh, bunkerbranding.com slash 45 or just go uh, into the description and look for the link. And also you can go to our website and find that stuff and more things like Hickok, or our website is called hickok45.com. And you can also find our uh, Twitter, which is hickok45, Facebook, hickok45, uh, the real hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, there's a hickok45 and son YouTube channel. There's a John underscore hickok45. Instagram. Our videos are also on full30.com. And uh, also those of you who have been asking us to become a Patreon member, you can also find the link to that in the description. And we appreciate all those people, of course. And basically anything that you need to know is uh, probably going to be on the website somewhere. So we try to keep it easy for you guys. You know, there's no excuses because we know you're already on the internet. If you're looking at this, you're probably on the internet. So all you got to do is open your browser. And if you're on your TV, I know you got a phone in your pocket. So no excuses. All right. Uh, okay, now what you should do is uh, watch one of these other other videos, as long as it's one of ours, because everything else is uh, is not good, of course. All right, thank you.